more time, Ron. can't live without you anymore I won't be satisfied till you're by my side I'm yearning for that moment when I say hello I see a smile will modulate on my arms again say hello I wanna see a smile, I wanna hold you in my arms again, do the little things we used to do before, honey I can't live without you anymore, I won't be satisfied till you're by my side, I'm yearning for that moment when I say hello. I see a smile, I hold you in my arms again Hold you in my arms again ba da ba da 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 Good afternoon. Um, my name is George Siegel and I'm going to be your host for this afternoon's activities. Thank you. First, I'd like to introduce the members of the band, but they seem to have left the stage. But I'm going to say their names anyway. And the reason I'm reading their names is I just met them. That was Ron Jubla on the sax. Great. Rob Menapace on bass. Great stuff and Peter Curry on the drums. And thank you for your applause in absentia. I first emceed these awards eight years ago because uh, I met uh, uh, B. Stern, who's one of the creators of this whole thing, in the elevator of our building and she asked me if I would emcee this and I said I'd be delighted not knowing what it was. And now here I am eight years later and I, I, I've come every year. It, it's like going to church for me. Of course I don't go to church but I'm sure if I did go to church this is what it would be like. And. These are the only people who asked me to play the banjo. So it's a double whammy. And since I've already done that, played the banjo, let's get this thing on the road. Thank you. And let's bring out the committee chair for today's Erasing the Stigma Awards, Sherry Renfro Yusum. Sherry? Old friends and new friends, we welcome all of you. A few minutes ago, the names of guests who are leading mental health advocates appeared on the screen. Forgive us for any oversights, but there's over 500 people here today. <laughs> and will you look at us? Everything has come together perfectly. 
It's all because of the dedication of the Board of Directors of D.D. Hirsch Mental Health Services and our awards committee, and because of our Champions Awards co-chairs, Jamie and Nicholas Heidegger, Merrill and Peter Mullen, and Nancy and Miles Rubin. Would you all stand while we applaud you? Thank you. I also want to celebrate Dee Dee and King Hirsch, whose support helped Dee Dee Hirsch Mental Health Services develop into such a far-reaching agency. This year, King would have turned 100 years old. He and Dee Dee would be so proud of the legacy his children, grandchildren, and extended family so proudly support. Many are here today, coming from as far away as New York City and Washington, D.C. It's been 14 years since Dee Dee Hirsch launched its first Erasing the Sigma Awards. Our first honoree was Tipper Gore. What a pioneer. She opened up a national conversation by sharing her history of depression. We still have a long way to go. But people like our honorees, Gary Nell, Allison Mullman, and Ross Zabo, are leading the way, and they're starting early. A wise person said, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. That's why this year we are focusing on mental health among youth. Half of all mental illnesses emerge by the age of 14. 75% by the age of 25. Yet, there's usually a lag of 10 years before they get treatment. Think of what those 10 years would mean to an eight-year-old child. Our honorees have been doing something about that, and so has Dee Dee Hirsch. More about that in a moment. Now, let's get back to George. Bring him out here, and we'll keep the show going. Thank you so much. Dee Dee Hirsch has nine locations, 550 staff and volunteers, and a $23 million budget. What does that add up to? Help for more than 50,000 kids and adults every year. Everything from clinic-based and residential treatment to suicide prevention and employment support. Dee Dee Hirsch also has a fearless leader, Keita Curry. She has steadily led Dee Dee Hirsch forward even in the worst of times and there have been a lot of them lately whether testifying in Sacramento, serving on state committees, or speaking to reporters, Keita also is known for her advocacy and for erasing stigma. Take it from me, she's an advocate from her head to her toes. When she asked me if I wanted to share something personal, I, I said, you mean you want me to make an admission? And without missing a beat, she said, ah, but you see, there's the stigma. Keat is what Carl Reiner calls a really, an authentic, the real McCoy. Why don't you see for yourselves, President and CEO, Dr. Keita Curry. I love working with George. Thank you for supporting Dee Dee Hirsch. We need your help. Since the recession, two million Californians have lost their health insurance. It's hurting children and their parents. In a national survey, we found out that nearly half of all teens say that their stress has increased in the last year. They asked parents the same question, and the parents had no idea 
how stressed their children were or how much they were worrying about family finances. We worry about finances at Dee Dee Hirsch too. Mental health has been cut to the bone. If it weren't for Proposition 63, there really wouldn't be a mental health system. But we're not going to let that stop us. We served 14,000 youth and young adults last year, and we're going to do it again this year because we know how important those services are. When I was in high school, a friend of mine started coming to school wearing a green big coat every day, all day. That image still haunts me. We didn't know the word anorexia then, but we knew something was wrong. But none of us said, are you all right? Because as little as we knew about mental health, we were already well-versed in stigma. When I got ready to go to college, I felt so tired, I told my older sister I really didn't want to go. You know, you might think that would be a big red flag for depression, but all we talked about was how important it was to get a good education, and I did. But there were also periods where I felt as dark and desolate as the most abandoned building in the city. You see, I'm one of those kids Sherry talked about. It took me 10 years before I got help at a community mental health center like Dee Dee Hirsch. But it was in the dark ages, so when I went for the intake, two of the questions they asked me were, how old were you when you were toilet trained? And were you breastfed? Science has come a long way since then. And so has society. Now there are kids that talk about going to therapy, and there are kids that ask for accommodations for their dyslexia and attention deficit disorder. But not enough. It is so sad that we are more concerned about the psychological scars of acne than depression. It's all because of labels. We're so afraid of labels when it comes to mental health. For any other illness, we'd be rushing to the doctor desperate for a diagnosis and treatment. That's why I tell my story. I think everyone in this room has a story, and I'm not going to ask anybody to speak, but I wanted to start. There are several young people here today, more than usually, and so I wanted to ask the people that are 25 and younger, if you know someone who's been in therapy, yourself, a friend, a family member, or someone who's struggled with depression or anxiety or any of the other many challenges, would you please stand? I want you to see those young people over there. They're doing something, and over there too. They're doing something I couldn't have done when I was a kid. And now, please stay standing because I want all the other people in the room that know someone, themselves, friend or family member, that at some point has known what it's like to have a mental illness, please stand. Okay, we know what our task is. Let's not be the silent majority. Thank you. Well, how do, how do you follow that? With lunch. So after a short break, we'll be back with the awards. Enjoy.